So you've heard of Kubernetes, but you don't know what it is, or you've been playing with Docker and containers and you want to know how to take it to the next level. Today, we're going to take a look at what Kubernetes is and see when and where we might want to use it. So stay tuned. So what is Kubernetes? Before we get into exactly what Kubernetes is, let's talk about when you might want to use it. You're in the situation where you've been using Docker for a little while, or you at least know what Docker is, and maybe you have it deployed on a few different servers. And this is great, and we've used Docker Compose in the past to actually go through and manage these kind of deployments, and they're, they're pretty simple for something that's really small. But say your website or application makes it onto uh, a big news source and drives a lot of traffic your way, and you need to scale up really fast. How are you going to go from the three servers that you have now to you know, 40 servers, 50 servers? How are you going to go past the handful of servers that you can keep track of in your mind um, when you really need to scale out your business? In this situation, where would you have possibly put uh, a specific container if you need to work with it? Or how are you deciding what containers go where? This is where Kubernetes comes in. And Kubernetes is a platform for working with containers, not specifically Docker, actually, um, just containers in general. You can use alternatives to Docker to manage the containers also, but Kubernetes gives you a few key things uh, that we're going to talk about. It gives you more that's kind of under the hood. It's a platform. You can build on it and extend it. But at its core, what Kubernetes gives you is a means to do deployments, an easy way to scale and it gives you monitoring. Let's take a look at how we actually do this with Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, you have a master node. So this is the Kubernetes master, and this is part of a cluster. So it knows of other servers that you create that you can then deploy containers to. The actual process of deployment is pretty simple too. So in this way, you talk to Kubernetes, you tell it what kind of image you would like to create a container from, and you give it some other criteria, and it creates what's called a deployment. So that would be your application in this case. And your deployment can say a bunch of different things. Uh, you can specify, I need a certain amount of CPU, I need a certain amount of RAM, uh, I maybe need a uh, specified amount of file storage. All of these things are held inside of your deployment, and Kubernetes will keep track of that for you. And when I say keep track of it, it's not like when we do Docker Compose to do a deployment where we just push a container out to run. A deployment is something that kind of keeps on going. It has a deployment controller that, in essence, if your application goes down, Kubernetes is going to know about it, and it's going to try to everything it can to auto-heal. So it'll spin another container up and recover for itself because the deployment is not just about that initial launching of the container. It's something much bigger in Kubernetes. Next, let's talk about scaling. So... I mentioned before that you're getting more traffic than you're expecting and you need to scale out your application. So the naive way to scale would be, oh, I'm going to deploy one app container per server. But that's not necessarily like useful in, in a lot of cases, right? Like sometimes um, you're going to be in a situation where that's not the most efficient use of your resources. So this is what I would call naive scaling. And this is the way like, this is a good way to do it when you have a few uh, application servers. But if you want to keep costs down, you can't just spin up a server every time you need to deploy a single container unless by chance you're spinning up a server that is exactly the right size for that. So the way that scaling works in Kubernetes is uh, it'll figure out where to put it for you. So scaling a deployment is done by modifying the deployment. So the deployment, like I said before, can hold on to how many uh, CPUs it needs, how much RAM it needs. It also can hold on to the scale. So you can say, I need to deploy five different Nginx nodes. You put them in the best spot, given that they have these hardware requirements. That might bring us to another situation of, how, well, how am I going to connect to my particular container? And that's where another thing inside of Kubernetes called services comes into play. So say Nginx is one of our services. We have multiple nodes that are running. Um, and we need to connect to those, but we want to connect to them in a smart fashion. So services let us manage all of these, and then they also put a load balancer in front and give us public accessibility to this particular service. We can have multiple services, just we can have multiple deployments. So what you'll see is that you know service A or our Nginx, maybe, maybe we need two containers for that, but our database service, we only need one container to actually run it. So we have those on two separate things, and they might be on the same machine, or Kubernetes might decide to put them on separate machines. 
it really depends on what your scheduler thinks is the best usage of your resources at the time. And you can tweak that within Kubernetes. You can tell it to prioritize an even distribution, or you can tell it to prioritize you like fully utilizing the resources on a single node you can write your own schedulers there's there's a lot you can do with this but at its core kubernetes is a platform for allowing you to actually maintain deploying containers into production once you get beyond a certain scale but it definitely works if you're you're not at scale if you don't have 50 servers that you're working with which are called nodes in kubernetes but even if you're not web scale you can still benefit from kubernetes because it gives you the automated health checks it can give you rolling restarts and deployments so that you make sure that when you deploy a new application you're never cutting off anything that needed access to that service and i've seen extensions to kubernetes that allow you to do things like manage your let's encrypt free ssl certificates automatically so so you don't have to do it yourself every three months when you know it's going to be up. So for the foreseeable future, we're going to be going through Kubernetes uh, in our weekly tutorials and actually um, building out some, some mock deployments and figuring out how to use each of these components. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you're excited to use Kubernetes for. If you could also give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, that would be sweet. Um, don't forget to check out the Patreon page. If you're getting some value out of Coder Journey, you could really help me out in kind of growing the channel. But more so than anything, just have a great week.